In this first presentation, we will go over all aspects of taking an intraoral scan efficiently and accurately. We will also go over all the different scanning protocols that exist and how to delegate tasks to your team. This way you can ensure you get the most out of your CAD CAM scanner and kickstart your CAD CAM journey. So to start off, it goes without saying, intraoral scanning has many benefits compared to traditional techniques. Back maybe five years ago, we had to convince dentists that this is the case, but the research is now clear that scanners are as accurate as impressions, if not more accurate. So let's just get it out of the way and go over the main advantages. And these include speed and efficiency, comfort for the patient, improved patient communication and education, and the wow factor. Patients love to see this tech and it builds trust. Lastly, these files that are made by CAD CAM scanners are easy to modify and store, helping reduce the amount of stone models that are lying around. We have moved away from the stone age guys, and it's time to embrace scanning. Much like amalgam fillings and other old dental tech is slowly fading away, I am sure this is the case with traditional impressions. Scanning is much better than using impression in almost every way. So let's get into it. Before you take a scan, you must fill out a prescription or lab form. Similar to the physical forms you send to your local lab, these involve choosing a tooth, a prosthesis type, indication, material, and shade. And once you've done that in the software, you can carry on to the next step, which is scanning. To make things simple, there are basically three different types of scan you will carry out. Full arch, edentulous, and quadrant scanning. So let's go over the scanning protocol for each one of these. To start, let's go over full arch scans. Taking a good full arch scan is a fundamental skill as it's important for many different applications such as aligners, orthodontics, restorative, and many dental appliances. It is a key skill to have. Let's go over the scanning protocol to start with. The first image you take is crucial as the scanner will build the entire scan on that first image. You want a smooth and logical scanning flow without requiring you to take too many stops. This is why we start at the occlusal aspect of the last molar. There is a lot of reference detail here to enable the scanner to easily create the image without stopping. From this point, you want to move to the occlusal aspect of the molar on the other side of the arch. You want to do this in a smooth and steady motion. When you get to the anterior aspect, it's common to have to tilt the scanner slightly lingually or buckly so that you don't lose alignment. Once you're at the other side of the arch, you can then tilt either lingually or buckly in this case and move towards the anterior aspect. While doing so, you want to also capture the buccal gingiva. When you get closer to the anterior aspect, it is common to have to stop and reposition your hand to enable the completion of the scan. You can reposition then place the scanner in an area you have already scanned, and it will recognize this and pick up the scan as normal. Once you do this, you can move towards the posterior aspect comfortably. And I'll show you this in a video. As you can see, as I reach the midline, I stop the scan, I reposition, and then I start the scan again in an area where there's already data. The scanner will recognize this and continue the process. And in this way, my hand is in a much better position to continue the scanning on the other side of the arch. Finally, once you reach the posterior aspect, tilt the scanner again across the occlusal surfaces and scan the palatal aspect from the posterior molar of one side to the other side. It's as simple as that. That is your full arch scan, and something that would have taken three to five minutes using PVS impression can take under 40 seconds with an intraoral scanner. At this stage, there are likely some areas where there is missing data, and you can easily add to these by rescanning. That's the top arch done, so let's go over the bottom arch. The bottom arch is the same protocol as the top. You will start posteriorly on the occlusal surfaces. You will then move towards the occlusal aspect of the molar on the other side of the arch. Again, in the anterior region, you may need to tilt the scanner so you don't lose alignment which will cause the scan to stop. 
Once you reach the opposing molar, tilt the scanner this time to the lingual aspect and move in a smooth motion to the opposite side. Cross the occlusal surfaces and this time take a scan of the buccal surfaces and ensure you scan 2-3mm to of the buccal gingiva as this becomes important for the bite registration. Just like the top arch, you may need to reposition your hand at the anterior aspect. Complete the scan by capturing the last part of the buccal surfaces on the posterior aspect. And at this stage you are done. Check for any areas of missing data and capture these spots. The handy thing about scanners is that even if there is an area which has not scanned properly, you can easily remove that specific spot and rescan it, rather than starting over like you would if there was a void in an impression. The last part of the puzzle is the bite registration. A bite registration aligns the top and bottom scans you have just taken. When taking a bite registration, make sure the patient is biting properly. That's the crucial part. This can be more difficult for patients that are numb, and the easiest way I find is to tell them to bite hard on their back teeth. Once they are biting, check the area and tell the patient you will slide the scanner between their cheeks and not to worry about it or open their mouth. Alternatively, you can place the scanner in the cheek first and then tell the patient to bite, but I'm not a fan of doing it this way as it makes it harder to confirm they're biting properly. Once the patient is biting down, place the scanner as posteriorly as you can, facing the occlusal table. Start the scan and in a zigzag pattern, slowly move the scanner to the front, while also tilting the scanner up and down to capture aspects of both the top and bottom buccal gingiva. Once the scan is aligned, the software will let you know, and this is typically by aligning the two arches in real time together, as you can see here. Once your bite registration is done, you have just successfully finished your full arch scans. And to help you visualize this, let's watch it in action in a real life clinical setting. As you can see, I start on the occlusal aspect and I move to the opposing side. And then I scan the buccal surfaces. As I reach the anterior aspect, I reposition my hand and continue scanning. You can see how the first scan is done very quickly under 40 seconds. I then go back and rescan any missing areas, and that is filling the gaps or voids that you can see in the scan. I then remove any soft tissue artifacts and clean up the scan to make it as tidy as possible. With one arch done, we then move on to the next arch. And it is the exact same principle. Scan the occlusal side first, then swing over to the buccal or the palatal and go all the way across to the other side of the arch. You commonly need to reposition and then you finish up by doing the remaining scan on the palatal aspect. You can see here again, we tidy up the scan by removing any soft tissue and then we fill up any voids or gaps in the scan. The last thing we do is take a bite registration and you can see how the software automatically aligns the two arches to let you know that the bite registration has been successful. Do the bite registration on one side and that is complete 
and you can also do the bite registration on the other side if you needed to. Moving on, let's talk about the edentulous scan. In general, edentulous cases are hard to scan and it will take a lot of practice before you feel proficient in doing so. The reason it is so difficult is because the soft tissue obviously moves around a lot and also a lack of good reference points. Like I mentioned before, the scanner will build an entire scan relying on reference points, so the lack of these makes it a very annoying experience for the user. Let's go over some of the protocols you can use to help make this easier for yourself. As you can see in this scan, there is a lack of reference points and this can make it really hard. Therefore, we need to choose our starting point carefully. The rugae for the upper arch is usually a good place to start. Thus, when taking an edentulous scan, the scanner is typically started in the rugae area, as this is really the best reference point you have. Build up the scan by moving across the alveolar ridge on both the left and right sides. Again, starting in the rugae area and moving from there. Then you move on to scanning the buccal side, including the vestibule and the frenum. And lastly, scan the palate. Start the scan in the rugae area and continue to scan the whole palate by moving the scanner in a zigzag pattern between the left and right alveolar ridges. If alignment is lost, you can resume the scan from the rugae area as this is your best reference point. If the alignment repeatedly fails on the same area, you may need to remove that particular area of the scan and try again. Again, not an easy scan to undertake, but that is your full arch upper edentulous scan. Another method exists which was described by Professor Lo Rousseau and published by Threshe. In this protocol, instead of starting at the rugae, you start at the tuberosity area of one of the sides. You then move along the center of the residual ridge towards the tuberosity area of the opposing side. Which side you start off doesn't matter. Once you've scanned the residual ridge, you then come back to the midline and complete the scan of the palate, again in a zigzag motion between the alveolar ridges. You then move on to the buccal aspect of the ridge. Start at the tuberosity area and move smoothly towards the midline, and then stop the scanner. Then start the scanning process again from the tuberosity area of the opposing side. Which side you start with doesn't matter at all. While scanning, the tip of the scanner should be rotated a bit so that it faces the vestibular slope of the ridge. That covers scanning the top edentulous arch. Which protocol you use will come down to the operator and simply what works in your hands. Let's now move on to the bottom arch. With the lower arch, there are obviously no rugae, so we are again limited in the choice for good reference points. The best area to start the scan is the retromolar pad. Starting here, you will likely need an assistant with you to help retract the tongue, especially in cases with severe bone resorption. As you start in the retromolar pad area, build up the scan by moving the scanner along the alveolar ridge until you reach the retromolar pad on the opposite side. You then scan the buccal and labial aspects, including the vestibule and the frenum, and it is much easier than it looks. Again, another protocol for the lower arch is by Professor Lo Rousseau and also starts at the retromolar pad. In this protocol, position the scanner a bit on the lingual aspect of the ridge, starting at the retromolar pad. You then proceed towards the midline. The scanner should be tilted in a way that it faces the lingual slope of the ridge. In some cases, the ridge is so severely resorbed, it may mean you capture the entire ridge during this motion. If so, move towards the retromolar pad on the other side. If this is not the case, or you want to scan a wider area on the buccal aspect of the ridge, once you are in the middle, continue scanning backwards towards the retromolar pad area that you started off at, and stay on the buccal aspect of the ridge. The tip of the scanner should be a bit rotated so that it faces the vestibular slope of the ridge when you are scanning the buccal side. At this stage, stop the scanner, let the patient relax, breathe, dry the area and start again on the other side. Restart scanning from the midline and proceed towards the retromolar pad area on the opposite side. You want to stay a bit on the lingual aspect of the ridge while doing so. The tip of the scanner should be a bit rotated in order to face the lingual slope of the ridge. Again, if there is severe resorption, you may capture the whole width 
of the ridge just by doing the lingual scan. If this is not the case, complete the buccal aspect of the ridge by moving from the retromolar pad area to the buccal aspect towards the midline without stopping the scanner. And that's it. You have successfully completed both top and bottom edentulous scans. Not an easy task. To take a bite registration will require more work than a full arch case. Taking a bite registration requires some form of appliance typically. Either an old denture, bite rims or another form of bite registration index. This will be something we will cover in detail in our more advanced courses. Let's keep it simple for now. Lastly, let's go over the quadrant scan. 